What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another poker vlog and this one gets fun. Start off playing a WSOP circuit event and from the title, make the final table. So uh, it was certainly an unconventional way of getting there and I can't wait to share it. It's a fun one and hopefully we can bank it. Final tables are always cool to make and this one's fun because it's six max. So if you like these Aruba videos, let me know in the comments below, drop a like. And if you want to come next year, they run these circuit events every single year. So probably around December, 2022. That's going to be a fun one. I'll certainly be back for this trip, but enjoy the footage. Hey everyone, this video is sponsored by Masterworks and a quick story. In 2019, Jeff Bezos bought Hurting the World Radio number two by Ed Rusha for $52 million. That's right, 52 million. And you may think that that is a whole lot of money for one painting. And what if I told you that this price made total sense? And on top of that, what if I told you that it was an incredible investment? Art as an asset class has outperformed the S&P 500 by 168% from 1995 to 2021. But we're all not like Jeff Bezos. I don't know about you, but I don't really have $52 million lying around to invest. But however, I found an incredible investing app that allows you to invest in art. Masterworks.io is the first and only investment platform. Here's how they do it. Masterworks buys artworks ranging from $1 million to $30 million by artists like Banksy and Picasso. Then they securitize them with the SEC, allowing investors to buy shares on their site in an initial offering just like an IPO. So once you've bought part of your favorite piece, you can then hold on to them until that piece is sold, at which point you can cash out or you can sell your shares on a secondary market to somebody else. Of course, one of the best parts of investing with Masterworks is that they know what they're doing when it comes to selling art. In fact, they returned 32% to their investors in 2020 and 31% in 2021. So definitely a proven track record here in the past two years. So if this sounds interesting to you and if diversifying your investment portfolio is important to you, then make sure to check out masterworks.io. Their link is now in the description below for you to check out and start browsing their site and buying some art today. So thanks so much for sponsoring this video check them out i highly recommend it let's start off this tournament in bullet number one where we pick up king jack of spades go all in and run into ace king yep warm welcome into this tournament where we brick our first bullet ace king's going to beat king jack most of the time and this one is like no other so fire on to bullet number two where we go into a hand with ace king off suit we're in the cutoff and let's run through this one. I open things up to a thousand and get the button, small blind, big blind to call. So multi-way, the flop comes nine, six, four, all diamonds. Well, the small blind who's first to act, he decides to go all in. He jams for about 5,000. Then the big blind reshoves for 6.1K. Oh, it's a turbo. I'm short stacked. I have two over cards and the second nut flush draw. I'm happy to gamble. I call as well. Then the button jams his stack. It's 9,000 total. It's becoming a four-way all-in in the first hand of the second bullet. So I call. Small blind has queen nine offsuit for top pair and the queen of diamonds. The big blind has six four with two pair. And the button, he only has eight seven of diamonds for the flush and open-ended straight flush draw just madness in the streets i have very little outs and unfortunately i do not improve as the runout goes brick brick and there goes bullet number two down in flames let's get on to bullet number three fire out another rebuy into the abyss here Bullet number three starts off when I have 8,000 in stack here. Blinds have increased to 300, 600, 600, and I'm in the big blind with ace seven off suit. There is a raise and a call, and I decide to go all in here in the big blind with a good hand, so I jam with a short stack. We get the preflop raiser to call, and we're up against king queen off suit. And you know, at this stage, why wouldn't king queen win? Um, yeah, that is three bullets down in flames but we are not ones to give up fire on to bullet number four and let's get the real tournament journey started bullet four starts in level seven blinds are 400 800 800 with 12,000 in stack i pick up ace 10 of hearts in the small blind and we're playing five handed so there's a cutoff jam of 12.7k the button thinks about it for a while, ends up folding, and definitely not going to fold this one. Have a premium, essentially, given the late position jam. 
I call and we're up against the Queen 10 offsuit. So pretty high favorite to win this hand finally. Finally, win a hand after four buy-ins and just like that, we have more than double starting stack and we're ready to get this one rolling. In the next hand, I pick up tens in the small blind with 33K in stack. There's a cutoff who jams for 12K. This time though, the button makes it a little bit difficult and calls. Me and this button player have similar size stacks and with pocket tens here, let's be honest, I am happy to get it all in. I rejam out of position. Action folds back to this button player who has about 20,000 behind and he ends up folding, which is nice. So happy to get a fold, we get to isolate and we're up against ace queen. The flop comes a set. Turn, oh my god. King for the gutter ball and the river does not pair the board. Nice hand Darren who watches the channel, big shout out to you. But unfortunately, our stack takes a little bit of a hit and we're down to 21,000, not winning this hand. Progressing to level eight blinds of increase, and I pick up kings in the hijack. Always nice to see a premium. There's a low jack who open shoves 14.8 thousand. It's about 15 big blinds, and sure enough, I am absolutely all in. Everyone else folds, and we're up against ace jack of hearts. The flop comes jack high, but the turn and rivers do not improve our opponent, and we win another one. We're just playing an all-in fest here at these early stages of the tournament, and the chip stack is back up to around 50,000, so definitely building a stack now and making a run for it. Oh, let's check in with you guys here. This tournament has been a rocky road, honestly. I don't know if I made the bust outs into a montage or just talked over them briefly, but I'm in for my fourth bullet and finally got a chip stack. I mean, past few days here in Aruba playing these tournaments, I've never bought in so many times into one single tournament before, repeatedly over and over again, but I feel like these tournaments are pretty good value to win a WSOP rank, so that's always the goal. Second, the buying structures are a little shallow so easy to bust really quickly and then hop back right back into it in place and also these are like pretty small fields for the most part under 100 buy-in so far today in this buy-in in this tournament and i feel like that's a pretty good chance to win a tournament considering there are 84 buy-ins and i am considering four of them uh, it's pretty fun though at the end of the day i have 51,000 in chips and less than a third of the field remain so we're gonna make the money soon hopefully i can survive and I have a lot of chips for the first time here, and I can't wait to just try to run it up. Um, it's a good spot to be in, six max, so it's better for how I play, obviously. And I'm just enjoying this view here on break, so on 10 minute break, and this is just lovely. So weather's beautiful, just paradise, and I'm just happy to be here, all things considered. But let's try to run deep in this tournament. Let's get the cards back in the air. Progressing onto level 12 now, I have Queen 10 of Diamond in the big blind. Action folds to the small blind player who decides on a raise to 2600. We're in position, I have a playable hand, it is an easy call, so we're off to a flop of ace, queen, six, two spades, and a club. This time, this small blind player starts off with a bets, and it's a large one to 6500. What the hell is this? I'm not sure, but with middle pair here, I don't think I can fold just yet. It seems a little too weak to do that. So I make the call and we see the five of clubs on the turn. So two flush rows out there now. And now <laughs> another head scratcher here. This player jams 20,000 into the middle. Oh my God, I fold. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Stack unfortunately takes an annoying hit, but uh, yeah, gotta fold the pair of queens couldn't do much with that. At this stage of the tournament, there are 21 players left and 14 players make the money. So thank goodness we made it relatively far after four buy-ins. There are $6,600 up top and a WSOP circuit ring. Let's go for it. With 16 players left now, I have 20 big blinds in stack, two players till the money, and we're in level 10. I pick up sevens in the small blind, five-handed here. The hijack with a big stack opens it up to 3,500. Action folds to me. We're in the money bubble, and I certainly can't fold this. I also can't call this as well, so I am all in. He asks for a count. It is a total of around 36,000, and he ends up folding. Phew. 
So I'm still alive, still on the money bubble. And honestly, this was one of those ICM spots where I think if I was playing in a main event or something, I might have had to find a fold. But here we're going for the win with only 16 players left. Got to accumulate chips to get the win. Progressing to level 11 now. This next clip shows the bubble bursting. Ace 5 offsuit wins. We are now in the money with about 50,000 in stack time to run it up without having to worry about any icm spots for now this next hand here gets a whole lot of fun we're playing four handed at my table now i have king 10 offsuit in the small blind and action folds to me look at the big blind stack and he has about forty thousand in his stack i have him covered by just a little bit so there's 20 big blinds to play for the money just bursted i'm jamming screw it i am all in this player now goes well into the tank and starts talking. He says that he must be ahead here, and it seems like he's got some decent hand. And after a minute or two of thinking, he ends up calling. So I'm praying that he just has some ace holding, and I just have two live cards. He has ace jack off suit. All right, that's what we asked for. 40% chance to win, and the flop comes ace 10 high. Oh, that's not good. Turn comes a brick. The river, 10. Let's go. Needed the suck out so, so badly. And now, oh, thank you, dealer, for that river. Bink City card, much needed. And now have almost over 100,000 in chips in such a gross, gross way. Find another way to find a big stack. All right, this is dinner break. We got some sushi shrimp salad in Aruba. So we're on a 30 minute dinner break, pretty quick. We're gonna grab a quick bite to eat, but check in with you guys. Final 12 of this tournament, 12 left of the six max. Feeling comfortable, I'm in a comfortable spot, I guess. I have a little over 100,000 in chips, which will be about 35 big lines coming back into the next break. There's a bunch of people with smaller chip stacks and it's gonna be fun to navigate through this. I just really feel confident and comfortable in these six max tournaments. I don't know, the structure's cool. So that's about it. 11 people need a bust to take home a ring. And that'd be cool to bring some hardware back on this trip. So that's the goal, 6,600 up top. And that's it, bank or bust. Let's try to uh, run good, get some good cards and win this one. Progressing after dinner break, I get a warm welcome back when the play resumes with pocket kings in the cutoff. Playing forehand on this table, I raise it up to 6,500, get the button to 3-bet, but it's a really small 3-bet to 14k, almost a min-click. Action folds back to me, and I'm a little confused about it, but I'm out of position against this player. We're both playing with pretty large stacks, and let's go for it. I put in a 4-bet to 30,000. I want to try to get as much money in the middle as possible pre-flop. Here for just another small amount, another min click of a raise, he ends up just making the call with about 60,000 behind in stack. So let's try to see a good flop and just get everything else in the middle, hoping he has a smaller pocket pair. The flop comes 10-8-4 rainbow, as clean as I can ask for with pocket kings here. I throw out a bet of 20,000. Expecting him to call or maybe even go all in with a hand like jacks or queens. And surprisingly, he ends up folding. So unfortunate spot, but it's always nice to pick up a good amount of chips. I was just hoping that this was a dream situation where it was a cooler against jacks or queens. Maybe a jam preflop could have gotten everything in, but who knows? Still taking down the chips and the chip stack is growing. In level 14 with about 140,000 in stack, I pick up ace jack off suit on the button we're playing four handed still and the small line and big blind are short so when the cutoff folds to me i decide to open rip it small blind folds and unfortunately the big blind calls whom i suspect wouldn't call unless this player had a premium a premium he does have it's ace king suited and he has 61,000 in stack we're off to a run out we are a big big underdog to win this one and sadly ace king is going to take this hand down and now our stack is down to about 80,000, but we have officially made the unofficial final table in this six max event. Seven players left onto the final table. We go on the main stage. One of the first hands here still playing seven handed on this final table. There's a button open to 9,500 and I pick up Jack 10 off suit in the big blind. Here is an easy defend and call. So I stick it in there and we're off to a flop, which comes ace queen eight rainbow. 
I check it over to this player and he bets out 10,000. With a double gutter here, I am happily going to put in a raise and try to commit my stack in here as gotta start check raising and bluffing with some hands. And with a two way straight draw, I think it's a good spot to do it. So I check raise to 25,000. And for 15,000 more, he makes the call with a pretty big stack. Come on, we gotta hit this one. The turn is the three of diamonds. Nope. Not what we're looking for, but I still think I have to continue bluffing. And when I have to bet here in this spot, I don't have much behind and it's going to be an all in. I rip it all in. It's a total of 42.5 thousand. He counts out the chips and he goes back and forth about this decision for a long time. It's about two to three minutes in and then he announces a fold. Let's go picking up chips in a huge way. Needed this so, so bad. And I'm happy to get the jack high bluff through. We take down a pretty big pot. Progressing to level 15, I pick up jack 10 offsuit. Once again, we're in the big blind. And since this hand treated me so well last time, let's play with it here. There's a small blind player who limps. And I just checked this one back playing blind versus blind. Off to a flop of 10-6 deuce, two hearts. As good as I can ask for with top pair here in the situation. He checks it over to me and I bet out 5,000. Here for 5k, he makes the call. Turn comes the king of spades. It's a card over my pair, so not necessarily in love with this card. Action goes check check. The river now comes an eight. And for a third time, he checks it over to me and... Definitely need to put out a bet for value and try to decide on what makes the most sense. Thought about small sizes, big sizes, and I decided to go for pot. I bet out 25,000. It puts a lot of random holdings into a tough spot, maybe even worse tens, maybe even some 8x or 6x might want to bluff catch here considering I checked back on the turn. And he thinks about it for a while, ends up making the call which is nice. Expect my hand to be good now, given how long it took him, and I show we do end up winning. It's nice to chip up in a big spot here. In these final tables, winning every pot that you're playing is crucial. Now we progress to level 16, blinds have increased to 3,000, 6,000, 6,000, and I have ace 10 of spades in the small blind. Our good buddy, Ronnie, who invited us down here, he's in this final table as well. He's in plus one and opens up the action to 13,000. We get the cutoff player to make the call, and I'm certainly not folding this premium of a hand I call as well, and we're going three ways to a flop. The flop comes four, five, seven, two clubs. And here we're multi-way, and I do something a little bit different, as I think this board texture should hit me a lot more than Ronnie or this cutoff player. So I actually decide to lead. I lead out 18,000 into the field. Ronnie luckily quickly folds, but this cutoff player has other ideas. He decides to make the call, which is a little bit concerning. Well, we're off to see a run out when the turn is the king of spades. I don't love the situation that I'm in, and I don't really have much equity to go along with betting. So I decided to check, and this player checks this one back. So that gives us a little bit of a tell as to how strong his hand is. I think if he had a set or two pair, then he should be able to bet a lot of the time. Anyways, the river is now the queen of hearts. At this point, I'm just trying to put some 7x or pocket pair holdings into a pretty bad spot, considering there are two over cards that he most likely didn't hit. I go for a value sizing bet of 38,000. I don't think ace high is going to be good here at all. He immediately just grabs chips when I put the 38,000 in the middle. This cannot be a good sign. Ultimately, after thinking for a while, he does end up calling. I couldn't bluff this player off twice in a row. I show the ace high, tell him he made a good call, and then shows us pocket sixes. Wow. Straight up soul read with fourth pair. Gotta give credit where it's due. Nice hand to you, Peter. And now my stack is down to 104,000. Still seven-handed. No one has busted from this tournament yet. We speak the busting into existence where we see pocket nines versus ace king and the short stack is eliminated. Now, finally, the first bust of this unofficial final table. We're down to six handed. Then right after we see a three way all in 
Pocket tens versus King Jack versus Pocket Queens. King Jack wins. Luckbox Ronnie here finds a full triple up, and now he also eliminates a player. We're playing five-handed now at this point. Just after watching Ronnie win with the King Jack, we pick it up ourselves here in the spot, five-handed in the small blind. Action folds around to this button player who is the chip leader of this final table. He puts in a raise and I have 92,000 in stack. It's about 15 big blinds, and this is going to be an easy all-in. If Ronnie can do it, why not us? I go all-in, the big blind folds, and this button player thinks about it for a long time before making the call. <sighs> oh no, he has king-queen, which is going to put king-jack in a really rough shape. But when the flop comes, jack-high, come on! Find a miracle suck out once again here at this final table. We needed it. And King Jack holds after a sick flop. Find a full double up. And we're back in this tournament after a miracle, miracle suck out to double up through King Queen. In this clip, we see Ace-5 versus Ace-3. And once again, we see another nice timed elimination as we are now down to four-handed. More all-ins coming here with Jack-10 suited versus Ace-9, rooting for Jack-10 to win to bring us to three-handed. Sadly, the Ace-9 wins on a dirty river, still four-handed, we're ready to battle it out. Then right after, we see Ace-3 versus Queen-Jack offsuit. Ace-3 is the stack at risk here, and unfortunate for Queen-Jack to win, so we're playing three-handed at this ring event. In the following hand, I pick up Ace-9 offsuit in the big blind. The button folds and the small blind limps. With a pretty strong ace here playing three-handed, this is certainly a raise, so I size up to 30,000. And the small blind player comes along for a call as he just has a pile of chips. We're off to a flop of Jack-9-8 to clubs. He checks it over to me and this board seems uber wet. A lot of draws and stuff that can be had, so with just middle pair, I check back. The turn now comes an ace, so alright, we certainly have the best hand a high percentage of the time. He checks again, and I decide on a bet to 45,000. And for 45,000 here, he decides on a call, so just hoping for some sort of brick river. The river is the seven of clubs. That completes pretty much everything, unfortunately. This player checks it over to me, and I just make what seems to be a nitty check with two pair. Although, flush gets there, straight gets there, everything. I check it back. This player shows King Jack offsuit, so definitely could have gotten some value. Sadly, uh, no value here, but still, chips get pushed my way, and now my chip stack is over 300,000, ready to keep building and hopefully take this one down. Progressing to level 19, we see an all-in. Jack-9 versus pocket fives. Jack-9 of hearts is at risk, but just flops goddamn everything. Oh my god. Couldn't have found a more perfect flop and run out for Jack-9 to go all-in. And a really huge pot as Jack-9 finds a huge double up and actually becomes the chip leader. Now, I pick up pocket fives myself at the very next shuffle. Just saw that hand go down in flames, but I'm in the big blind, and both of the players limp it over to me. Well, I have about 20, 25 big blinds. We're playing three-handed. It's a pair. If it can't win the last time, it can hopefully win this time. I go all in, and the button snap calls. Oh, God. At least it's nice to see that we're flipping against king, queen of spades. We're off to a run out, and... The rest is history. Oh, I just realized that I uh, wanted just busted like two minutes ago, and I just realized that uh, I shoved a little too large. Uh, like 25 plus big blinds, two limpers, heads up. Like, I don't know. I don't know why I wanted to flip it, but I guess then there's more aggravated myself, I guess. Um, I shoved um, 28 bigs, like 280K. Oh, no, there was, I don't know. I shoved maybe a little too big. It was more than 20 big blinds. I just realized that that was stupid. Didn't need to flip there, but I took the gamble and it didn't work out over two limpers. Just thought it was like a weak limp and king queen suited is pretty good so um good luck to those two uh <laughs> yeah didn't didn't work out this time again it's kind of annoying um uh, just like the competitive part of me is really upset 
at not like closing it out and like choking the final table, but sometimes like cards can't really go in your favor all the time. So there's that. Uh, end of the day, thanks so much for watching. Uh, closing out the video, it's a pretty long one. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, that's always free, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.